Hello, I'm Scott Crook, and welcome to another episode of Crook, Scott Crook's Family Treehouse. This episode explores the long interconnection between the Crook and Myers families from Putnam County, Indiana. My fifth great grandparents were Frederick Krug and Elizabeth Hare. Frederick Krug was born in Germany about 1770 and traveled to the United States shortly after the Revolutionary War. Frederick married Elizabeth Hare in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Frederick was a tailor and had a farm nine miles south of Lancaster City. Lancaster County housed a large settlement of Mennonites and Elizabeth was a direct descendant of a prominent Mennonite leader. Lancaster County still has a large population of Mennonites and Amish Mennonites residing in the county. Frederick and Elizabeth had nine children. My fourth great-grandfather was Frederick and Elizabeth's son, Frederick Krug. Frederick was born about 1880. A family history compiled by Norman Peters in 2002 notes that Frederick married a woman named Margaret Grimes and lived in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, near his father until 1828. It appears that he lived in Pennsylvania until sometime before 1840. In 1840, Frederick and Margaret moved to Putnam County, Indiana. Putnam County is a rural county located in western Indiana on or near the Illinois border. And it's approximately 617 miles from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The 1840 census shows that Frederick Crook um, moved into the area with five males, his wife, and two young daughters. It also shows that he began spelling his name Crook, C-R-O-O-K, rather than Krug, K-R-U-G. Land records show that Frederick purchased property on November 24, 1840, in Putnam County. The property was located in the southwest corner of the county, a few miles south of a city called Greencastle. Although the 1840 census record shows that nine people were living in the Frederick and Margaret household, we know that by 1842, there were only four children. And we know that those children were Henry, Samuel, Frederick, and Christina. You will recall that Frederick Crook had, uh, Crook had eight siblings. One of his sisters was named Christina. A family history shows that Christina Krug had married a man named Samuel Myers. The history did not know much about what happened to Samuel and Christina, but they, it did note that they were living in Union, Ohio. Samuel Myers and Christina lived obviously from uh, some distance from uh, Lancaster County, but then they can increase that distance by moving from Union County to Putnam County, oh, Indiana. In fact, they purchased a property on the same day as Frederick and Margaret did in property that was located very close to the Frederick Crook property. As you can see from the map, the Myers and Crooks were close neighbors. In fact, their properties were less than a mile apart from each other. 
Samuel Myers and Christina Crook Myers had nine children. Henry, Frederick, John, Simon, Mary, Samuel, Jacob, Christina, and Daniel. So Frederick and his sister Christina were neighbors. And the Myers and Crooks were cousins. However, only two years after they moved to Putnam County, Frederick Crook died. And Frederick Crook's wife, Margaret, remarried to a man named Isaac Davis and moved out of Indiana. By 1850, Margaret had moved with two of her children to Vermilion, Illinois, where her husband, her new husband lived. Vermilion is about 200 miles from Putnam County. Prior to Putnam, um, I'm sorry, prior to Margaret's move to Vermilion, her oldest surviving son, Henry Crook, had married a woman named Margaret Jackson in Put Putnam County. Unfortunately, Margaret lost her second husband on September 17th, 1852, when Isaac Davis passed away. So Margaret Crook Davis and her children, Samuel and Christina, moved back to Putnam County, Indiana. In 1854, two of Margaret Crook and Frederick Crook's children married in Putnam County, Indiana. Samuel married Elizabeth Scarberry, and Christina married Columbus Jackson Scarberry. While all this had been going on in the Crook family, Margaret Crook Davis's brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Samuel Myers and Christina Crook Myers, appeared to have been having a relatively uneventful life on their land neighboring Margaret's. While Margaret had seen the death of two husbands and had made at least two moves, the Myers family had stayed on their land. Unfortunately, on April 10th, 1853, that all changed. Christina Myers passed away. This turned out to be very disruptive and eventful in the Myers life. You'll recall that the Myers had nine children. Although three of those children were 18 or older at the time of Christina's death, when Christina passed away, Samuel was left with six children who were 16 or younger, the youngest being about two years old. The two youngest were Christina and Daniel. In 1855, Simon and Christina's oldest daughter, Mary, married a man named George Washington Skelton in Putnam County, Indiana. Soon thereafter, they moved to Rockford Township, Pottawatomie County, Iowa, where they immediately began raising a family. Also after Christina's death, the Crook family and Myers family became much closer than first cousins. Within three years, Samuel Myers married Margaret Davis. Now, not only were the Crook children and the Myers children first cousins, but they also were stepbrothers and stepsisters. Shortly after they married, Margaret sold the old Frederick Crook property to a third party, and Margaret Crook's children moved out of state. Samuel and Christina moved with their spouses and their brother Frederick to a town called Paradise, located in Coles County, Illinois. Coles County is not too far from Vermilion County, where Margaret, Samuel, and Christina had lived with Margaret's second husband, Isaac. 
Henry moved with his wife, Margaret, to Rockford Township, located in Pottawatomie County. Remember, this is where Margaret and her husband, George Skelton, had moved a year earlier. Unfortunately, Margaret Crook Davis Myers did not live long after she married Samuel. By 1860, the census records show that Samuel Myers, without Margaret, had moved on to St. John, Harrison County, Iowa, with his sons John, Simon, and Jacob. His youngest children, Christina and Daniel, were living with Samuel's oldest daughter, Mary, in Rockford, Iowa. Samuel Myers eventually died in 1863 while serving as a soldier for the Union Army in Iowa. By 1880, many of the Myers and Crook children were living in Rockford. Frederick Crook and Margaret Crook Davis Myers' child, Christina, who had married Columbus Jackson Scarberry and moved to Coles County, Illinois, passed away after 1870, and her husband and some of their children had moved to Pottawatomie County, Iowa. After moving to Rockford, Frederick and Margaret Crook's son, Henry, and daughter-in-law, Margaret Jackson Crook, had many children. In fact, they had nine. On June 29, 1868, however, Margaret Jackson passed away. The following year, Henry Crook remarried a woman named Mary Woodrum. They had a child named Amanda Oliver, Olive Crook who apparently went by her middle name, Olive. If you'll recall, Henry Crook had moved to Rockford after his cousin and stepsister, Mary Myers Skelton, had moved there. This means that Henry's kids and Mary kids were second cousins. Apparently, one of Henry's sons, Dennis, and one of Mary's daughters, were kissing cousins. Dennis and Eliza ended up getting married. Unfortunately, Henry Crook died shortly after that marriage on December 7th, 1882. The probate re record lists all of his living heirs at this time. Sadly, the record shows that his second wife, Mary, had passed away and two of his children, Henry Grant and Lucinda. Two of his remaining children, Charles and Amanda Olive, were left orphans. John was appointed guardian for Charles. Amanda, however, was appointed a different guardian. In appointing guardians for these children, the court required a guardian to post a bond, a document that ensures that there's money in place to take care of the child if the guardian does not fulfill his or her obligations. Usually, bonds require a surety, a person who is backup on the bond. Dennis Crook, Amanda's older half-brother, was appointed as gar the guardian. Eliza's father, George Skelton, was the surety. And you'll remember that George Skelton is the husband of Mary Myers, who is Dennis's mother-in-law, first cousin, once removed, and now, and step-aunt. So he, she was his mother-in-law, first cousin, once removed, and step-aunt. Unfortunately, Amanda Olive's tragic life was not over. Dennis Crook died within a year of being made her guardian. By 1885, 
Amanda Olive and Dennis Crook's widow, Eliza, were living with Eliza's parents, George Skelton and Mary Myers Skelton. This story certainly shows a significant Crook Myers connection. The connections are not over, however. It seems that Christina Myers, the younger daughter of Samuel Myers and Christina Crook Myers, who moved in with George and Mary shortly after her mother's death in 1855, liked the Crook family a lot. Christina's cousin Henry Crook had a son named Abraham that was about her age. In 1878, they got married. Given that the marriage record is a little ambiguous, as it says that Christina Myers married an A.J. Crook, a cook, not crook, a person might second guess this conclusion. Christina's death record, however, is not so ambiguous. She was definitely. Samuel Myers' daughter. It is fair to say that the Crook family history is mired. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Scott Crook's Family Treehouse. Join me next time when I will discuss the interesting life and aliases of Abraham Jackson Crook, my third great-grandfather's brother.